do with our project. Um, and by defining how do we do that? Well, first of all, we use geometric um, objects. That's, for instance, points and lines. And uh, by defining a point or a line, you can assign then different, um, uh, let's say, features that can simulate the behavior that you want. So, for instance, when you create a point, which you can just do it by clicking the create point button it's one of the um, options that you will see in the side toolbar and you will see that you will have more options than just creating a geometric point by geometric point i mean just a single point on a specific location but you can already create something that can be assigned on that point and that is for instance a point load um, which can be used to apply a specific load or it can be a point prescribed displacement that is to d define already where this specific point will move to or even assign a fixed an angle don't worry about um, what the, the structural elements are right now i will give you also the overview you will see that later on today uh, as the last presentation by uh, by dennis my uh, colleague uh, apart from points we have the lines and the lines again just like the points many of the things that we will say in definition will seem very very similar in the way to do you just click on the button to create a line and to determine of course a line define line you need two points so you can click directly on the drawing area and you can create a line and exactly just like we have with the points we have the same with lines it is possible to to assign a feature to the line directly so you can create directly let's say a line load a, a line prescribed displacement a node to node anchor an embedded beam uh, element uh, a plate uh, I think here in the presentation we say beams beams are for 3D, but practically in uh, in in 2D what you will see is is a plate element. This is all structural elements that can help you us uh, determine a specific behavior like footing or a, an excavation wall. Uh, all these are determined as lines, at least in uh, in Plaxis 2D, and they can already be created directly uh, from from the graphic interface. Um, let's have an overview a bit about all these different options that we have so when you switch to structures mode like i said there is the side toolbar that you can use for all the quick um, uh, features let's say all the quick options that we want for people to have easy access to um, so to to get started from the top we have the select and that's the arrow that allows you when you have clicked on that that's usually the default also behavior or that's also the default behavior when you click escape for instance from your keyboard it will be uh, the select um, option so this means that when you click with your mouse with the left mouse button uh, you are allowed to select on something and what can can help us that well when we want to see the properties of something we need to select it when we want to change something to an object we need to select it and of course it can happen that it's not only a single item a single object that you would like to select but you would like to select more than one then we have this window right below it this is select multiple objects that allows you to select more than just one object and we have like uh, grouped things so you can either select all points or all lines or all plates or all line loads for instance so like you can also select a group of things that have the same uh, functionality in the model uh, the next option right under it is to move objects well i think that's quite clear straightforward it allows you to move something to another location um, the one right under it is the create array well, the array is, is a very useful um, feature that can uh, make copies of an existing uh, object. So, for instance, you have a line and you know that this line will be uh, at intervals of two meters uh, with each other because you want to create 10 lines exactly the same with two meters apart. Well, the array, you only need to create one and then use the array to replicate, to copy, to create copies of that specific line uh, as many times as you want. That can be, of course, in the X or the Y direction. It doesn't have to be only in one of them. But um, the good thing about that array is that it doesn't only create copies of the actual geometric object, but it creates a copy of anything that is on that object. So if you select a plate, for instance, and you say, I want to array that, it means you will array the plate too, which is very, very useful, especially if you want, for instance, to create a pile field where you have quite a big number of piles. Well, you only need to select the uh, the line that contains that, that pile property. Usually it's an embedded beam. And then you can just create the array and create a series of 80 piles, for instance, in one go. 
Uh, right under this, you see the create point. That's the one that I also explained. And you see also the different options that are available there. You can just create a point, of course, if it is a geometric point that you need to do something, to draw something. Or you can create directly a point load or a point displacement, um, a prescribed displacement, or a fixed and anchor. So you, can, you don't need to create a point first and then create a point load. No, you can just directly create a point load. So that's actually very, very useful. Uh, the create line is the same thing. You see a few more options here. You see also the interface um, also that is possible, uh, but all the options can be defined directly. You don't need to create first a line and then create, for instance, the line load. In principle, the way that Plaxis um, creates objects is that yes, indeed, you do need the geometric line to exist before you create a plate, for instance. But practically, when you create a plate, we know that this means that you need the line there. So we'll, we will create the line for you and assign the plate element on that line. So you don't need to create them separately. Just create directly the plate, the line will be there for you. And the next option is the create soil polygon. Well. Of course, I already talked that we will define our stratigraphy via boreholes, but what if I want to start building a, a dam or, or I want to create an embankment uh, or uh, even I want to define some excavation uh, uh, step? Well, you can create this by creating a polygon, a soil polygon, and by so it means that it will just create a, a, a shape, a closed shape where it can be assigned to a soil or any other type of, of um, material. It can be concrete, for instance. And, and that is easily accessed by the Create Soil Polygon option. You see that you can create the soil polygon like with free drawing, practically, uh, clicking on the on the drawing area. Or you could create a, a rectangle, or there are some other options to be able to create on top of some other existing geometry or split an existing polygon into different pieces with the cut option. And of course, if you have already created a polygon, you can also edit the points of that polygon and on. Uh, but in principle, the most useful thing is that you will be able to um, uh, to, to de define, let's say, uh, the um, the soil rectangle by just drawing it. For instance, the embankment, uh, and then that is what is going to be passed for the uh, uh, for the calculation phases that we want afterwards. We want to, to build it in principle. Uh, there are other options, of course, like for instance, you want to create a tunnel. We have a specific um, uh, feature for that. It's our tunnel designer, where it can help you take every single step for defining the tunnel, uh, not only its geometry, but also the, the process of building it. So everything can be done in the tunnel designer. And then uh, just to make it even easier for most of the common things, we don't only store things and group things by means of geometric entities, like the point, the line, or the soil polygon, but we also define them as type of them. So you have all the loads in one place. So you might click, for instance, on the create load, and what you will see is practically the create point load and create line load option. And the same for the create prescribed displacement. You will see both the point and the line prescribed displacement there available. So you don't necessarily have to go to the point to pick the point load. You can just go directly to the load and pick the same uh, option there. We have them in two places. There's no, uh, uh, it's just that we have multiple ways of defining the same things. And of course, since structures play an important role for most of our geotechnical models, we have the create structure option. And there you'll see all the different options as we'll see later on. And uh, this includes, of course, the different structure elements that you can use in your model. We will see more information about it later. Uh, here, it's also possible to create a hydraulic condition. What do we consider a hydraulic condition? First of all, a well or a drain that defines a specific condition in your model, what will happen with the water or the pore pressures that will be generated. And of course, a dedicated groundwater flow boundary condition. We'll receive more information about that later on, but you can determine directly uh, via a line element, uh, a specific, let's say, um, inflow setting. So you know that you have a specific amount of water going, infiltrating to your, uh, to your model. For 2D, since we have the thermal module also available um, in Plaxis 2D, uh, we have also the create thermal flow boundary conditions. Uh, it is, is an extra option. And last is the create connection uh, that will be used in order to connect between the uh, different plate elements that you might have if you want to create, for instance, a hinge connection or, or a no rotation, uh, practically a, a connection that has completely free uh, connection. And this is more of uh, the structural elements part. You will see that a bit later uh, today. 
Um, one important thing, so we, we so far, what what have we done? We have created, first of all, the um, the soul stratigraphy. Uh, we have created the structures, but um, in my brief introduction, I mentioned that you will need also to determine some boundary conditions. The, the finite element world does not really work as it is in reality, um, uh, and you need to determine yourself what are the conditions that occur at the edge of the model. The edge of the model is the end of the world for the model. So in that case, you need to determine what will happen at the edge of that model. By default, Plaxis has some already boundary conditions defined. That is to, to assist you so you don't have to do that. In Plaxis 2D, um, since many years ago, we make these options as default, so you don't have to do anything. And what are these default boundary conditions? Well, first of all, everything that has to do with your the bottom of your model, like the very most bottom uh, line, this means that any deformation that could occur at that uh, at that elevation, at that depth, will be fully fixed. That means that there is a fixity, a full fixity at the bottom of your model. So there is no movement there. We consider that to be very deep enough. It's not of our interest what happens really that deep. It means that practically the soil should not feel anything that changes on the ground surface. So very, very deep in our model, there is practically no deformation. So that's why we fix it. And that saves, let's say, also the effort because in the, in the, in the finite element world, you need to have this condition uh, to restrict the, the fixities of the model in order to be able to calculate things. And what happens to the sides? Well, for the uh, perpendicular, um, for the, uh, for the sides of the model, we have perpendicular displacements that are fixed. So the, the lateral, uh, in the lateral direction, there are perpendicular fixes, which means that you don't have to worry whether your model will fall to the left or to the right. This means that they can go, of course, up and down, but it cannot go to the left for the left boundary and to the right for the right boundary. So in that sense, we we kind of prevent our whole model. You see also the red lines in the... Uh, in the photo next next to the text we make sure that these boundaries are well defined fully fixed at the bottom perpendicular uh, fixity uh, on the on the lateral surfaces um, of course someone can can easily ask yeah okay but maybe I would like to have a different condition applied in my model well that's okay um, you can define like we said a line prescribed displacement and the line prescribed displacement allows you to determine what exactly is the displacement on that along that specific line uh, so what you can do is that you can simply create a prescribed displacement via the line uh, object and then say well, this boundary condition, I don't want it to be fully fixed. I want it to be only vertically fixed because I want to apply a horizontal motion, for instance. So in that case, you can override the default option by directly creating a line prescribed displacement and put it exactly at the model boundary. Anything that is user defined in Plaxis always overrules any default setting that we have. So in that case, first of all, we make sure that you have a condition to start calculate your model but at the same time if you create something yourself your your creation your uh, condition will override whatever default behavior we have so time for a quick um, question for everyone um, how many modes does Plaxis in